Welcome back to lecture number three in this lecture series on Windows Server 2016 with me, Joachim Sjöverstad from the University of Skövde. Uh, what we will do in this demonstration is that we're going to install uh, Active Directory domain services so that we can promote our uh, demonstration server to a domain controller and thus get ourselves a domain. Uh, a domain in this sense is basically a collection of resources so it can keep track of hardware like servers, computers, printers and so on, users and managed groups of users. The uh, functionality that we are after is that we will be able to add uh, as many client computers as we want to our domain and any user will be created on the domain controller and any user that we can uh, create an Active Directory on our domain controller can log on to any computer within the domain. And we can also specify rules that will apply to all users on uh, or computers on a user basis or a computer basis and this kind of stuff that will dig into on a much deeper level. But what we will do for now is install the server role that we need. So what we do is that we click manage again, add roles and feature in the, in the upper right. So we go manage and then add roles and features. And we go to this nice dialog. So we click next until we get to the selection of server roles. And in this case, we just select Active Directory Domain Server Services. Uh, again, we get asked if we want some extra stuff. We take that happily. We click next. We click next. Click next, and we click install. So during the installation, it's a good time to talk a little bit to you about DNS. So what happen? Uh, so what happens? Or one requisite of having a domain controller with Active Directory is that we have a running DNS infrastructure within our system or within our computer network. Uh, the DNS server in this case is, um, is responsible for pointing out where the domain controller is for this domain. So when we go about and add a computer to, uh, to this domain, we will specify the IP address or the host name of the uh, domain controller, which in this case is server, but our computer in itself does not know where that server is located. So what it will do is ask its DNS server to uh, to tell it where the domain controller for the domain it tries to join is. And for that reason, we do have to have a, a DNS server running within uh, within the domain that we are installing. Uh, if we do not already have a DNS infrastructure in place, the installation dialog for Active Directory will take care of that for us. And so now we can see that we installed the Active Directory domain services rule. Uh, and just as before with DHCP, we get a yellow triangle up at our notification center. So we click that and we are asked to uh, do some post deployment configuration where we promote our server to a domain controller. So let's go about doing that. Uh, there are of course setups uh, where you may, where you can use Active Directory in in different modes. So for instance, you can have a backup domain controller, you can have an offsite domain controller. We will go through that a little bit uh, in later demonstration. But for now, we just have uh, we just have a very simple setup where we're going to make this machine the only domain controller in this domain. So hitting promote this server to a domain controller. I get a couple of choices. Uh, so as you see here, I can either add the domain controller to an existing domain, uh, or I can add a new domain to an existing forest. A forest in Microsoft terminology is essentially a collection of uh, several domains, or I can add a new forest entirely. So in this case, I actually don't have a domain and I don't have a forest. So what I will have to do is to add a new forest. Uh, I will then supply the root domain name. So what do I want to call this domain? Well, we decided in the last video lecture that it will be do 9 joacalocal So I just go with that and then I click next. So we'll have some validation going on and in just a little while we will be uh, we will be turned to the next uh, to the next option where we have to begin with selecting the forest functional level. So the functional level is basically about backwards compatibility. So whenever a new server is released, new things are added to it, and those functionalities are not necessarily compatible with every prior version of Windows, right? So when selecting the forest functional level for this new forest, we decide 
how old servers you may have in this forest with good functionality and the same with the main functional level but then on the domain level so if we click down one of these you can see that we can select anything from windows server uh, 2008 to windows server 2016 and since this will be a windows server 2016 only environment we'll just go with windows server 2016 but if the case is that we plan to include older servers then we will have will have to select another functional level and uh, next we have to specify the capabilities and first we can select whether or not it should work as a domain name server or a domain name system i just told you why we need a dns server in the domain so we will let this machine be one and uh, next we are forced to use it as a global catalog so every domain needs to have at least one domain controller that acts as a global catalog. And the global catalog is basically an inventory of all objects within the domain. So it will house all the users, all the computers, all the different resources and so on and so forth. So forth. Uh, we cannot select the next option, which is read only domain controller. And that is essentially a backup domain controller that you cannot do configuration to but that will just house all the data that is on the primary domain controller so what we're installing now is essentially a primary domain controller and next we have to type in a directory services restore mode password and that is basically a password that we can use to do some restoration if stuff goes to crap so select something that you remember but also something that is kind of complex and i suggest typing it down and storing it in a safe not store do not store it on a note that sits under your keyboard because that would be very insecure uh, but select a secure password and store it somewhere where no one else than you or other people that should be able to access it can access it. Uh, when we're done with that, we select next. Uh, then we are going to do some DNS option. So in this case, we need a DNS delegation within our domain, but we cannot create one because we do not yet have a DNS server. Um, and that is not really a problem because we will get a DNS server during this uh, during this installation. So just uh, just forget about this warning and click next. And then we can uh, get into some additional options where we will we'll first uh, get a NetBIOS name. And in a little while you will see that the NetBIOS name is essentially the first part of the domain name. Uh, I guess just go with that. And uh, next next thing we have to do is select where Active Directory related data such as the database and log files and such will be stored. And best practices is of course to not store this at the C partition but somewhere else, preferably even spread out uh, across different disks. But we're not going to be able to do that in this case because I only have one hard drive in this computer. So I'm just clicking next. And next we have a review. An, a chance to review with the options that we have and and I just want to specify here that you can see in this listing that this computer will be configured to use itself as a DNS as its preferred DNS server you can also see that DNS server service will be configured on this computer so Microsoft again is taking care of this and if we click next again we will do a prerequisite check which is basically the server checking that this role can actually be installed so it's going to take a little while but not too long and um, if i'm not mistaken we can expect some warnings you see that we have one here that has to do with the dns server delegations again but essentially we see that the prerequisite check completed and all uh, prerequisite checks passed successfully so what we'll do now is click install to begin the installation and i will get back to you when that is done so now we're back after the installation of Active Directory and a reboot that was also necessary. So what I first want to show you now is that if you just go to the tools menu in the upper right, you can see that we have a bunch of Active Directory modules installed and we also have DNS. Uh, one thing that you usually learn the hard way is that when you install Active Directory in the domain where you have a DHCP server, the DHCP server will actually stop working because you have to authorize it first before it can continue to work. So if we begin with clicking tools 
and DHCP server, you will notice that there is a little red downwards pointing arrow on both IPv4 and IPv6. So the way we resolve this is that we click on uh, the server as a whole and we click authorize. So when we do that, we'll see that the arrow changes, changes, changes its shape to a green check mark instead. So what I did now after installing uh, Active Directory was that I went into the DHCP configuration, I, ri I right clicked the server right here, and I selected Authorize. And now it says unauthorized instead, but this basically makes the server work again, the DHCP server. So now that we've done that, we're just going to have a quick look around in Active Directory and in the DNS settings. So we can begin with the DNS settings, so Tools and DNS. And basically what we have here is our DNS server that we can click down. And we can see that what we want to look at right now is that we have a forward lookup zone that is called do 9 jawaketa local and we have some hosts in here so we have one that is called server which is pointing to our server uh, if we dig through the other ones we will see that we have different server records so for instance here we have a gc which is our global catalog and we have a service location pointer that points to our server we have an ldap pointer uh, that also points to our server and what these server records do is basically that I point out to the domain or anyone asking that the domain controller is located at the server so it can be found throughout the domain. Uh, another thing to look at is if you right click the server itself up here, oh it seems like I typed the computer name, name wrong so it's actually sewer which is a little bit more funny. Uh, okay, right click sewer and then take properties and I'm going to show you two things here. So if we begin with forwarders, you can see that the DNS server that was formerly used as the DNS server by this machine is now used as the primary forwarder. What a forwarder is, is basically where this server will forward the DNS requests that it cannot answer itself. So if a client that is using our server as DNS server asks for the IP address to go.com, our server will not be able to respond, so instead it will forward the question to its forwarding address, which is 10.0.252.201. And it also uses root hints if no forwarder is available. The root hints is the different root servers out in the world that handles all the top domains. Uh, so that was what I wanted to show you in the DNS server configuration. I can also show you how you would go about if you want to manually add an additional record. So say for instance that you want our sewer to be accessible through the domain name server. What we can do then is add a C name. The way we do that is basically that we click in this and we add a new alias. And we just type in the alias that we want to be uh, our machine to be accessible through so we type in server and then we also type in the fully qualified domain name for the target host we can also browse for it if we want to uh, it's easy in this case because there's only one which is sewer and then we click and then we click our way up to it okay i don't know where it got so we'll just type it in instead sewer at do 9 joaga local and then we hit ok so you can see now here that we have a C name so sewer can also be accessible through the domain name server which is more reasonable and that's it for the DNS manager uh, next thing I want to show you a little bit is Active Directory users and computer which is basically the inventory of users and computers in our domain. We will uh, start the next lecture by talking more about how you would structure and populate your Active Directory using PowerShell, but in this case let's just have a quick look. So in the left pane here you see that we basically have a tree structure with different containers. Those containers are called organizational units and is where we go put stuff. Uh, so there are different ways you can structure this up, but for instance you have all domain controllers in the domain controls organizational unit, you have a, a built-in organizational unit that is called computers, where we'll, we'll have computers added to the domain, and we also have an organizational unit called user that contains 
uh, default users. So what I'm going to do real quick is to add a new organizational unit and I'm going to call it my, uh, my users and I am going to add a new user to it. I do that by just clicking my users and I get this big white box. I can right click and I will take um, take new and I will take user and I'm going to create a user that I named test. Uh, what is of importance is actually just a user logon name that it needs to be able to log on. So I go next, I give it a very complex password. Uh, I make sure that the user cannot change password and also that the password never expires so I can use it forever and ever and I finish and now I have my first domain wide user. So what we want to do in the next step is add this uh, add our client to this domain so that this test user can log into the client. So to do that we head back to our domain and what we're going to do is just right click on the flag and then we go to system. So then we get up to this dialog and what we can do then is uh, this you can do this in different ways they hit it real well in Windows 10 but what I'm gonna do is scroll to the bottom and I'm going to check system info so I get to a dialog that is a little bit older where I feel a little bit more comfortable then I go look in the path with computer name and domain settings and what I do here is that I go change settings and then I come to this dialog where I can hit change and then I'm going to change the computer name to something else. So I'm going to call it client1 and I'm going to make it member of a domain that is do9joaka.local local and then I'm going to hit OK. So it's going to take a while and I will be prompted for a username and password. So I'm going to use administrator at do9joaka.local and the password and hit OK and if things work well on the first try I will get the message saying welcome to the do9joaka.local domain and I will hit OK. I have to do a restart for this to take effect so let's restart this computer right now. Um, no. Uh, restart now. And while that happens, we will go back to our server and we're going to have a quick look in the computer's organizational unit. We're going to update that and we can see that client one is now being managed by our domain controller. So we have all of that set up. So um, this is how you would add a new machine to um, and how you would add Active Directory domain services so that you can control computers, groups, and users from a central slot and then add a client computer to the domain. Uh, let's just see now if it rebooted. Yes, it has. And now we should be able to log in to our test account on this client. So it's Windows, so it takes a some time. It still asks me to log in with Yuki, which is my local user. So I'll select local user instead. And you can now see that it says sign in to and my domain name. So I should be fine with taking test and then our password. And we'll just see that it works. It's going to do some initial setup for this user that we're not going to wait for. But this hi and welcome to staff is proof that it works. So that's it for this demonstration on uh, installing Active Directory and adding a client to our newly created domain. Uh, so thanks for this and see you next time where we look at how we populate Active Directory.